In this video, we're going to see an example of working with vectors of user-defined classes. So here I've defined a very simple class. It only has one data member, an integer num, and it has a constructor. So the constructor just takes an integer parameter, default is zero, and passes that and sets num equal to that parameter. And I'm not sure if we've seen explicit before. There is an example in a different C module on the explicit keyword, but this is just here to prevent some CPP warnings. And this tells C++ that I don't want you to do any implicit conversion. So for example, I could, if I had a my class object called A, I could say A is equal to one. And since there's an integer parameter, it would call this constructor to create a my class object. And I, I don't want to mess with that right now. So I don't want to allow that to happen in this case, so here you, I'm going to make this explicit. Then I have a print statement that's going to print a number, and you'll notice there's a const modifier here that just says that this, mo this method is not going to modify anything in the class. That allows me to use constant references to this class. And then I also have a change method which updates num. So I'm going to create two different vectors here. The first is a my class vector. And the second is a my class pointer vector. And I'm doing this just so that you can see the differences between the two. And I'm going to add five numbers to each vector, or I should say five cl my classes to each vector. And before I do that, let me create a my class object. And then in here, and that's just going to be a default constructor. Inside the for loop, I'll actually call change to create a new or to update its value. And I want you to see the difference between doing this with a vector of my class objects versus a my class pointer. Now we're going to push back. var to vector 1, and on vector 2, that's a vector of pointers, so I'm going to push back the address of var. So let's print these two vectors, and I'm going to pull off a constant reference to each my class object that's in vector 1, and I'll print its contents. And I'll do the same thing for vector two. Now here, II needs to be a my class pointer. So this is actually a reference to a constant pointer. And I'll print that, but again, II is a pointer, so I need to use arrow notation. So let's print this. So I called it vect. So that should fix that problem. And also, let me run CPP check. Okay, good. So let me run this code, and you can see it prints vector 1 and then vector 2, but with vector 2, notice, it just prints 5. And the reason for that is, is I keep pushing back a pointer to this object. Well, unfortunately, that's always the same object. I'm just updating the value. So I'm going to have five pointers to this object. So what I need to do here, is a vec2 pushback new my class ii. And when I do that, and when I compile, you'll see that I get the individual values. Here, even though I'm pushing back the same variable each time, it's actually a copy of that variable that goes into the vector. So this means it doesn't matter if this is a local variable or 
or what this variable is, this is all going in as a copy. Of course, if it's a pointer, I have to be a little more careful because if I copy the same pointer over and over, it's a different value. Here, if I use the same variable each time, it doesn't matter because I'm updating the value here. Now, if you want to pass a vector as a parameter to a function, And again, I'm going to make this a constant reference to a vector of my class objects. Again, the reason for that is, is I don't want this to change. And so by making this a constant reference, it ensures that I won't accidentally change the vector in my method. However, I still have the efficiency of passing this by reference. And again, I, I could pass this by pointer as well, but I, I don't see the reason for doing that because a reference works just as efficiently and you have a little bit more protections on you when you pass it with a, as a reference. It also makes the syntax a little cleaner. So here I'll say printing from print my class vector. And we'll say for it for we'll do a for each loop here. We'll print two spaces at the start of the line before we call ii print. Then we'll print a new line. And then let's call this down here. So we'll print VEC1, and let's try VEC2 as well. So when I print that, I get an error at line 48 here, and it's saying invalid initialization of reference type const standard vector my class from expression of type standard vector my class pointer. Again, this doesn't work because this takes a vector of my class. Vector2 is a vector of my class pointers, so unfortunately I can't do this. And uh, I'll also put a comment here that this, this line we're always adding same pointer to the vector. So the question is which of these is better? And I would say it's generally better to avoid using pointers unless you have a really good reason to. There's no reason not to use the vectors. The one thing I would caution you, though, is since there's a copy here, you want to make sure that your class, if it's one that you wrote, has a copy constructor so that that part actually works correctly. So let's actually demonstrate that. So let's, we'll add that copy constructor. I think that will do it. Actually, let's say uh, so there. that way we can actually see that this copy constructor is, is happening. is num in this particular my class implementation. So you can see we're getting called we're calling the copy constructor multiple times. So let's uh Let's add a little bit of code here so that we so that we're able to see exactly what's going on. Actually, let's skip that end line here. We'll do it here. 
just so that uh, we'll print the constructor line on the same line. Okay, so we're telling what II is each time, so that should give us a little more of a hint what's going on. And there's an error here. And when we run, we can see that we're calling the copying instructors. And I'm still not quite clear what's going on, so I need to, need to put a space here. So to differentiate the class we're creating here versus this one, let's add a 10. We'll see if that helps clear that up. And for the copy constructor, let's indent this a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and do the end of line here. Again, just trying to make sure we can see more clearly what's going on in the output. So. When I run this now, you can see we're getting these called. Now, I, I don't think I mentioned what's going on with these these extras, and, and that's just the case where the vector itself is actually resizing. So when it resizes, it has to copy everything. So we have the the one where it's calling where it's copying in the parameter, and you'll notice that that's first each time. But then once it has to do an expansion, it needs to copy the rest of those values. And so that copy constructor is actually getting called multiple times when it resizes. It doesn't have to resize here or here. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to how you can work with vectors of objects that you define yourself. The one thing to keep in mind is, is when in doubt, try to avoid using pointers and pointers objects and so forth. It's easier just to use references or allow copies to happen. Again, if it's too big of an object, maybe you don't want to use a copy, you'd prefer the reference. But I think for the smaller programs we're going to be focused on right now, it might be easier just to ignore pointers and references at all when you're working with vectors and just don't have a pointer to your vector, don't have don't add pointers to the vector, just use objects that are on the stack.